Banished from Earth Classic Game Room broadcasts from the Intergalactic Space Arcade on its never ending mission to review everything. Welcome to Classic Game Room. Do you like your horror survival games on the Dreamcast? If so, you might like this one, but don't confuse it with Resident Evil. It's more like Mist mixed with John Carpenter's The Thing. It's D2 on the Dreamcast, and it's weird. So But at least it has flamethrowers and a talking parrot. Yes, it's an odd game made all the stranger when you play the Japanese version. (laughs) Yes, why am I playing the Japanese version of D2 when this has a Western release? Because this copy was sent to the show by Adrian in Hazelbrook, Australia, near Sydney in New South Wales. Let's get you up there on the map. Okay, this is a bizarre horror survival game where you play as an expressionless blonde lady who somehow ends up in the wilderness after a plane crash or something, surrounded by an unlimited number of infected weirdos constantly trying to kill her. There's loads of random enemy encounters, so prepare yourself to shoot things. Everything about this game is just off-center. It, it doesn't feel like anything else that I've played. It's like they put a whole bunch of action scenes into Mist, And then tied it together with this third-person exploration stuff, which looks great. The environments are incredible for a Dreamcast-era game. This spans four discs and has a cool story if you have the patience to sit through it. There's some RPG elements added to the game as well. You'll shoot monsters and level up, which makes the beginning quite challenging. I recommend grinding for a bit just so she has some health. The action scenes are downright bizarre. It's like a shooter on rails. You just aim and then look to your left and right occasionally trying to shoot the monsters and take some damage, which is why you'll definitely want some health. There's lots of cutscenes and dialogue. No, you cannot skip them, so prepare to set aside some time for D2 if you intend on playing it. There's boss battles and some puzzle solving. To be honest, I used a walkthrough. I can't imagine playing this one without it. Most of D2 is pretty straightforward, but there's things you can easily miss. Like when you're talking to a character, maybe you'll forget to look to your left and check the cupboards, and there's something in there that you'll need to unlock the next sequence of events. So you could literally just run around forever and just not figure out what the next thing you're supposed to do is. Of course, it probably didn't help that I'm playing the Japanese version of the game. I'll give this one credit for being technically impressive, though. It looks amazing. (laughs) 
The directing is really good, too. If they're going for an eerie storytelling style inspired by movies like The Thing, they nailed it. But that constant suspense comes at a price, and that price is pacing. It's a slow game. The outdoor environments in particular look phenomenal, but Laura takes forever to do anything. It's like, do I really need to sit here for three minutes and watch her open a door? That's right, if you pull the door towards you, it opens, and then you can walk through it. Because the door has been opened and is no longer in your way. Now, unlike one of the older Resident Evil games, when you're inside a building or the tunnels or whatever, you don't really have full control over your movement. You zoom in on what it is you're looking at or turn around, kind of like Mist. In fact, exactly like Mist. And woe to the person who doesn't write down these codes. Running around the wilderness without that one little piece to progress the storyline will result in extreme frustration and anger. All that being said, D2 is an extremely cool game. It's like playing a work of art. It's like playing a suspense film. And that's not going to appeal to everyone. I am impressed with this game's ambitious nature, and it just rocks the Dreamcast. Everything about the game looks really good. Oh look, it's a piano scene! Where have I seen one of these before? The environments look incredible, the character animations are generally very cool, the monster animations are downright creepy and terrifying. The music and the action do eventually get repetitive, although it's very well produced. And the exploration parts are suspenseful, but something is missing. And that something is probably the overall sum of its parts that don't really add up. But at the same time, that's what makes D2 unique and weird and enjoyable because of it. The Japanese version apparently has some scenes that were cut from the Western release, so thank you to Adrian once again, a happy belated birthday to your wife in the Blue Mountains of Australia. If you like mist, art, and horror, then this is D2, not to be confused with R2.